said the other day, and I don't know how many of you read, not too many Americans do that anymore, but they showed us that in 10 years, one-fifth of the money America makes will go to health care. Now, no country can survive where basically 20% of the monies that the country bring in go to taking care of people that are sick. With that said, we've got to find a way that we have far less people who are ill. And the statistics are stunning today. They never stop surprising me, even after four decades of me doing this work. The statistics get worse by the day. You know, cancer is crippling to people, but then the emerging diseases like diabetes, the rate we're going now, we just sat down a couple of weeks ago and realized that by the year 2040, that if we keep up at the rate we are, within the first six years of life, every American child will have contracted diabetes then. So in 2040, by that point, the rate we're going now, every American child will have diabetes. Why we know that, and why statistically that's even a conservative number, it may be sooner, is because 50% of the American, North American children are obese or overweight. As a matter of fact, when I was over in Geneva, Switzerland a couple of years ago, another stunning fact came out of the United Nations that week, where they said from the tip of South America to the very top of Canada, by the year 2010, next year, 50% of the children in all of these countries in the Americas will be overweight or obese. Now most of you, when you hear diabetes, instantaneously think about sugar. But sugar is not the main culprit that creates diabetes, it's fat. And if you notice, the groups of people that contract the highest levels of diabetes, aren't they overweight and aren't they obese? And the answer is yes. And what happens is the fat comes into the body and smothers the human cell and doesn't allow the glucose to be the food that feeds the cell and then it further remains in the bloodstream and that's what we call blood sugar. And that blood sugar then either becomes low blood sugar or then diabetes. It's not only precipitated by animal fats, of course animal fats are the highest way to get it, the best way to get it, but also if you went a little crazy with coconut oil, another saturated fat, you could end up diabetic. You also have to watch sugars. Once you have crippled the pancreatic function because you've overdone the sugar and the pancreas is supposed to be processing that, then any form of sugar is literally going to enhance low or high blood sugar conditions. And that means fruits, fruit juices, etc. The other thing we have to understand is that everyone, unless you're born with diabetes, first had low blood sugar. How many of you knew that? First thing you have is low blood sugar. And what that generally means in most medical blood tests, if you have 65 and lower, and it's consistent, not periodically, that is a low blood sugar hypoglycemic condition. What happens with these people that may be a year, two years, five years, 20 years, one day they wake up and their blood sugar is 250. And the general number is 115. If you're consistently above 115, then you end up with a diabetic condition. The other sad thing is when I was in school back in the 60s, they used to talk about adult onset diabetes and they used to talk about childhood diabetes. It was pretty easy to understand that. If you were 27 years old and older, that was adult onset diabetics. If you were below 27, you had childhood diabetes, but there was a little bit of a gray area between 22 and 27 that you could possibly have type 2 diabetes, or what we now call type 2, which is adult onset diabetes. Now the scary part is, the new cases of diabetes, which this decade, by the way, is going up 850%. And I'll repeat this so you get it. Diabetes in the United States this decade, from the year 2000 to the year 2010, is going up 850%. Two thirds of the people contracting diabetes are children below 16. Did you hear what I just said? Now go back and let's relate to what I said four and a half minutes ago. That why that's happening is the obesity level. These kids are overweight. Now, how can we not expect that to happen? When you have addicted parents that go through drive-throughs to feed their family, and now more than ever because you can get dollar meals, and they're so overweight and so out of shape that they can't even walk into the restaurants anymore, what do you expect to happen to their children? 
like it or not like it, we learn from our parents. And if what our parents taught us is that food doesn't matter, and that we literally can stick anything down our throat as long as it fills us up, that was a mantra in my family, loving, wonderful family, and all they ever said is, let's go get filled up. How many of you relate to that? Did anyone ever talk to you about nutrition? My mother never said as much as she was a wonderful mother. Listen, you're going to be really well nourished after this meal. <laughs> she said, you're going to be filled up or you're not going to be filled up. And if I wasn't filled up enough, she made sure I was filled up because she gave additional what? Cakes and cookies and pies and ice cream.